This is fun and fresh for me. This is a funky, fresh experience. There's not a single audiobook. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, unpopular opinions. Like, I don't love that. Listen, I am a slut for a bargain, so I went for it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to another vlog. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new to my channel. Really happy to have you here. So I'm in a bit of a pickle because I want to vlog my Bookworms New Year's month progress readathon that I'm hosting, but I also want to vlog the Scooby-Doo readathon, which just starts today. And I, like the silliest goose that I am, I don't really have like a lot of overlap between my Scooby-Doo books that I want to read and my Bookworm New Year's books that I want to read. Like, why Why do I do this to myself? Now I'm already thinking like, well, I could just throw it in the trash can. I could just restart everything. I am really excited about all of the books on my Bookworms New Year's TBR that I made. I have already read one from that list that was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, which was an arc that I read uh, and was to satisfy the debut author, debut novel prompt. So that's one down out of nine. I'm also halfway through The Space Between Worlds. I listened to the first half on audio. Hi, honey. This is Sunday. <laughs> Do you see her tail twerking? <laughs> and on top of these two readathons that don't overlap, <laughs> I am also reading an audiobook that is not on either TBR, and I'm also reading a physical book that is not on either TBR. Like, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> so those books are Lab Girl by Hope Jarin. I'm about 70% through the audiobook of this, which is on my Reading Women Challenge for the year, but again, like, isn't part of these readathon challenges. And I'm also almost through A Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir. This was in my December TBR for like three separate readathons, and I'm so close. I finally like sunk my teeth into it over the past week, and I think I have about 70 pages left. So I'm hoping I can just get that done today. And maybe Lab Girl too actually, now that we're talking about this, maybe the plan for tonight is it's almost five o'clock. So if I get some chores done and stuff and listen to the rest of, wow. Listen to the rest of Rad Girl is what I was going to say. <laughs> I think I can listen to the last like 30% of Lab Girl and get some things done around the house. Okay, so I just decided as I was recording this, talking to you, that I'm going to finish those two books that don't count for anything except that I'm excited about them. Like it still counts because I'm enjoying reading them. You know what I mean? It's just not part of like the gamified challengey thing where that is readathons. So after that, I will get started on my Scooby-Doo readathon challenge as well as like continuing with Bookworm New Year's. I will let you know after I finish one or both of Lab Girl and A Sky Beyond the Storm. Starting with Lab Girl. Let's see how much I can get done. 69% done with Lab Girl. Hey yo. <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> just finished Lab Girl by Hope Jaren. She said Jaren in the acknowledgments, so I'm gonna go with that. And um, I liked it. I thought it was like, okay. I really, really, really loved like the first half of this and the second half didn't make much of an impact on me. But overall, like reading about a woman in STEM and like the trials and successes and challenges that she has faced and that she has persevered through, that she has pioneered and trailblazed from her own perspective in her own words was so awesome. So cool. Um, I really liked it. It just like, there were parts of this where it was like, okay, get to the point. Like, what is the point of this chapter? There's, I, maybe that's just a thing with some memoirs. I don't know. It, it really did like go super fast. I only had 30% left to read tonight, but it's not even, it's like barely nine o'clock. And I, I have taken quite a few breaks. So the night is young. I don't really have anything to do tomorrow. So I feel like I'm happy to stay up and finish the sky beyond the storm <laughs> and then maybe have a good cry and then maybe get a head start on one of the books on my actual <laughs> TBR for the two readathons that I'm doing this month. Talk to you soon. Later that same evening. So just kidding because I just went to 
go grab my book out of my purse because I came home from the office today and uh, apparently I did not put the book back into my purse when I left the office. So won't be finishing A Sky Beyond the Storm because it's across town in the office. Oh well, I guess, of course. I think I'm gonna start with World of Wonders, which is on my Scooby-Doo Readathon TBR, but not my Bookworm New Year's TBR but it is really short. It's like less than 200 pages. I also have Where the Wild Ladies Are by Ayoko Matsuda, which is on my New Year's TBR, but not my Scooby-Doo TBR. So I feel like I want to take a chunk out of both, but that's like the seven in me wanting to have everything and give time to everything. So if I'm being honest with myself, I think I'm more excited about this one, even though I feel like I'll be able to get this one out of the way. I feel so silly, but like, this is just classic. This is just a real classic Noelle move. But tomorrow, I will go and get A Sky Beyond the Storm and finish it tomorrow night. But it's okay, because now I get to get a head start on both of these readathons. Well, this readathon's already started, but the Scooby-Doo readathon like actually started today, so I feel good about myself that I'll actually like start reading something for that readathon on the day the readathon starts. Too many words. All right, let's read. <laughs> Friday night. Congratulations, you played yourself. I accidentally set myself up for failure with the Scooby-Doo readathon and actually also <laughs> Bookworms New Year's because there's not a single audiobook. Hi. <laughs> there's not a single audiobook on either of those TBRs. And um, why would I do that to myself? Why would I do that to myself? So I think what I'm going to do is replace because you love to hate me on my Scooby-Doo TBR with Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse um, for the underdog prompt on Scooby-Doo and then just not worry about because you love to hate me. It's been unread for like six years. It can wait another month, whatever. I also have um, Ninth House on audiobook, but it's due in just a few days and I don't think I'm gonna get to it. So that's fine. That wasn't on any TBRs either. So it's no big deal. So I think I'm gonna start um, Black Sun. It's due in five days. No, Ninth House is due in five days. Black Sun is due in three days. And it is a 12 hour audiobook, which means I need to get down to business if I have any hope of finishing this. So I'm gonna start Black Sun and clean some things up and do some laundry and clean my kitchen and all that. And then later I'm hoping to finish World of Wonders tonight and maybe take a chunk out of Ballad of, of Songbirds and Snakes. I don't know why I can't say that title. I think I mentioned that like, I'm really enjoying Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but I'm also, I'm not even halfway through yet. So I'm hoping to make some good progress on that as well. And I will uh, update you later. <laughs> good morning. It is Sunday morning. I'm about to jump on the Rumi's Digest channel for books and brunch which will be obviously done by the time you see this. So go watch that. I'm sure it was so much fun. <laughs> so I came here to update you that last night after sprints on Rachel's channel, I finished World of Wonders, which was this little cute collection of nature essays by Amy Nozuku Marzatil, I think. Like there were some essays that I really liked and there was some that I did not really care for. So I think it was, it, it, I'm like glad that I read it. This might be like a four. I want to say this is probably between a four and a three star, but I, I don't really do half stars very often. So I have to think a little bit harder, but overall like good, a good read. I'm happy that I read it. And my plan for the day is to finish Black Sun. I'm 50% through Black Sun and it is due in two days. So that's super manageable. Super manageable. I would like to finish that today, but that might be ambitious because it's an audiobook and I don't know how much I'll be able to like listen to anything today. My next plan after Black Sun is to finish the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which I just am like reading slowly because I've been trying to like 
start Black Sun before it's due and finish World of Wonders and like all these other things. But in order for me to like balance that spread in my bullet journal this month, kind of similar to how Drinking by My Shelf does her balancing the books, in order to balance that out and not have to like unhaul anything from my physical TBR at the end of the month, I need to read some more from my physical TBR like ASAP. So even though I have some arcs to get through, I think I want to prioritize my physical TBR actually. So that's my next plan. I'll let you know when we get there. <laughs> Hello, I don't remember when I last updated you, but the update is that now it is Tuesday night and I thought that I had another few hours on my loan of Black Sun, but I was wrong and I was just informed from the app that my loan has been returned. So I will continue to read the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and let you know what happens next. <laughs> Hello, it's Wednesday night, Wednesday, and I thought I was doing fine. I thought everything was hunky-dory, but I am on page 300 of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And I realized when I made all of the promo and stuff for Booktube Happy Hour, which starts tomorrow, first episode with Elena from Elena the Great, that I wanted to have this done so that we could talk about it tomorrow because Elena is like one of the only people that has told me that she actually liked the book so far. Um, and everyone else that has seen that I'm reading this book has just said how much they hated it, how much they thought I was gonna hate it. And I feel like Elena and I have similar tastes and I wanna be able to talk about this with her tomorrow. So I'm going to finish it tonight. You heard it here first. Here's my thoughts on it like so far. Now that I'm like past the halfway point, I really, really like it, honestly. Like truly, I really like this book. I think that it definitely does depend, like so many people have said in their reviews, it really depends on your expectations like going into this book because it's The Hunger Games, but it's like the 10th one rather than like the 74th and 75th of Katniss's. So like people don't watch it, it's considered boring. Like there's no change in arenas. There's, it's the first year they've ever done mentors for the tributes or interviews for the tributes. And it's not even mandatory. It's like, it's not even for the tributes. It's as, it's like a, a cool perk for these mentors who are like high schoolers. It's basically like a project for the high schoolers. So they're like, oh, well, what if each of you mentored a tribute in the Hunger Games? Coriolanus Snow is like one of those mentors. So it's literally 65 years before Katniss's Hunger Games when he's like the villain evil president. I, I love it. I love it. I love that we get to see the origin of this person who ends up being like so evil and twisted 65 years from now but also I really love like seeing how the games developed and how they began and how the culture was so flipped from where it is when we see like Katniss's games and the like culture of the Hunger Games because the war like the rebels and the annihilation of District 13 it's like it's so fresh that the characters that are at the forefront of the story like lived through the war. Like Snow's parents both died because of the war. Like he lived through the war himself as like a child. So he's outside of the arena. So we get to see him like on stage or on the TV, like talking about uh, his tribute or like sending her <laughs> um, food and water. Cause it's the first year they ever allow like uh, sponsored gifts to be sent into the arena for the tribute. So we get to see like behind the scenes of him being a mentor and what that means. I really don't know what the problem was, like why people didn't like this book. And I'm trying to think back on the reviews that I've seen other than like, yeah, like the character is twisted, that we know that because 65 years from now he's super evil and there's definitely some moments in the 300 pages that I've read where it's like, oh yeah, there's, you're not a good person, but you think you're a good person, which is like 95% of all villains think that they're the good guy. So I don't know, I, I, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it so far. And now I will go ahead and marathon the last 200 pages. It's currently, it's currently seven o'clock. Okay, I will report back in a hundred pages from now. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I'm really glad that I updated you 
when I did because like 20 pages later this book was just flipped upside down. The Hunger Games aspect, like the games with tributes, ends way earlier than I thought it would and I have a hundred pages to go. It's This is not gonna be a book for everyone and that's okay that's probably why this has gotten so many mixed reviews because like yes he is reacting to things that happen to him like we all are in our life like things happen we react to them but at the same time like you are the master of your own destiny and you choose how to react to those uncontrollable variables um and so it's really telling the way that he's learning to control his reactions or the choices that he chooses in these moments, the choices that he chooses, but the actions that he chooses, I guess I should say, I don't know. I find it really fascinating and I will um, update you when I finish this in a hundred pages. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, I have finished the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and I have thoughts, I have, I have, thoughts about this book. Most of them are good. Like overwhelmingly my thoughts are good. Everyone's gonna get different things out of the original trilogy because of how like popular it was and because of when it was published. Like I was talking to some friends on um, reading sprints the other day about how it, The Hunger Games is like a product of its time where it is like the classic young adult dystopian with a love triangle and a lot of like common tropes that I don't know, would be in there if Suzanne Collins like republished it or had written it in 2020 per se. I think it might be a very different book if she had written it now, but this is what she wrote now. I really don't know what to say. I really loved this. This is like truly a villain origin story. My one like complaint is that I would have wished this was in first person, um, like first person from President Snow or Coriolanus Snow because The Hunger Games is in first person from Katniss's perspective and I would have loved to just be inside Snow's head like a little bit more in first person because th throughout the book you're like wondering like how twisted is he really and it's it follows like the events that lead to him being evil like you know that's not a spoiler because like in Katniss's time when Snow is in his 90s He's super fucking evil. And so when he's 18 in this book, he starts like kind of innocent, but with some baggage, definitely with some trauma. And over the course of this book, like things happen to him and choices that he makes. And I was here for it. I wrote a very brief Goodreads blurb. Sorry that I know that like just changed, but this book is very slow, but not in a bad way. Maybe in a bad way, if you loved how fast paced like the Hunger Games trilogy was, but it's slow, it's subtle, it builds very, very slowly. You almost like sneaky how, I don't know, how it escalates. I loved it. I loved it. I loved the ending. I loved, how twisted it was, but I didn't realize how twisted it was like until the very end. So <laughs> sue me, I, I loved this book that everyone, almost everyone has told me that they hated. So I don't know why I'm like this. I don't really love being the person with like, ooh, unpopular opinions. Like I don't love that, but I know that loving this book is not a popular thing. So here we are. You know what? The perfect way to describe this is like, if you liked the Joker, then you would like this. And if you thought that the Joker was like way too dark and not your thing, then you're gonna hate this because it's like literally the story of what turned Snow into the evil twisted man that he was 60 years later. Loved it. And now, I have to reckon with the fact that Black Sun was returned to the library before I could finish it. I knew that it was a risk because it only had a few days left on its hold. The risk was calculated, but I am bad at math, as my boyfriend says. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? Yeah. yeah. Hello, good morning. It is Friday the 22nd, and that means that there's three days left of Scooby-Doo, including today, because it ends on Sunday the 24th, and I have like roughly about a week left of Bookworm New Year's. 
So here's the situation. I've decided to go back to my original TBR plan for Underdog and read Because You Love to Hate Me, which is like a short story collection um, that booktubers also contributed to. Like they gave these authors prompts on short stories to, that they would like to see about villains. But this is like six or seven years ago, so it's really fun to see like, oh, these were the big booktubers like seven years ago, which made me think like, I can also count this, or I'm going to count this for the longest unread book on my physical TBR for Bookworm New Year's because originally I wasn't really sure what I was gonna choose for this anyways, and all of the books that I put in like my optional choices for that prompt in my January TBR video just were not calling out to me so far. So that gives me one more thing I can double count, which makes me feel good because I literally have had this forever and just have never picked it up, which like, I don't know why, I like short stories, I like villain stories, and the collaboration between like bookish creators and notable authors is like, Duh, like why don't we do that more? Why is that like not a thing that happens as often? I think I've read about five of the stories and there's been one or two that I've like really really loved and the rest are like enjoyable. One of my favorite stories so far was like a completely all done via text messages and um oh my gosh it was so cool it was like a King Arthur and Guinevere slash Persephone Hades story. So cool all through like text messages Wow. So I'm glad I finally picked it up because I'm actually really enjoying it. I don't know what had intimidated me about it. But anyways, that's the update is that that's now going in my Bookworm New Year's TBR as well as <laughs> back into my Scooby-Doo TBR, which means after this one, which I think I can finish today, I'm hoping to finish it all in one day, Friday. I already read half this morning. <laughs> so I've also had like a few cups of coffee in case you couldn't tell how quickly I'm talking. After this one, the only one that will be left on my Scooby and Shaggy TBR lift is Watchmen. Lift? TBR list. Then after that, there's two left on my Daphne TBR, which are both arcs. The challenge is going to be maintaining the momentum like this weekend. I feel like this weekend is make or break it because I'm trying to wrap up the Scooby-Doo readathon and also keep going on my Bookworm New Year's. I just haven't finished as many as I thought I would have finished by now, but I also know that I still have like a whole week, like a whole eight days left eight or nine days actually. So in reality, it's gonna be fine. I've kind of saved all of my like shorter books until now. So we will cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, the weekend focus is to finish the Scooby-Doo readathon, which is, uh, you'll see this on Tuesday after the readathon like ends. So by the time you see this video, Scooby-Doo readathon will be over obviously, and hopefully I have like lots of success to share with you. So, <laughs> I just need to say, I don't know what vlog this is going in, but like I just spent the last hour trying to make the stupidest TikTok. Like I thought it would be easy because it's like a stupid, simple idea. I am, am, am I the problem? Am I that millennial? I gotta, okay, all right, I'm having a crisis, bye. <laughs> Hello, friendos. We haven't actually filmed in front of my bookshelf in actual months, so I thought this might be a fun treat. <laughs> I came to update you that it is officially Sunday night. It is the last day of the Scooby-Doo readathon, and I don't know if I'm gonna make it, you guys. I did finish Because You Love to Hate Me, which I'll talk about in a second, and so far I am only one chapter into Watchmen, I don't know. It's been a weird weekend. I, I swear I blinked and the weekend is over. Sorry if you can hear Sunday drinking, as always. <laughs> because you love to hate me. Okay, this book surprised me in some ways and disappointed me in other ways. I don't really know how to feel about it. I definitely could have done without the essays by all of the booktubers. <laughs> so it's a collection of short stories by a bunch of like popular YA authors and for each one each author was given a prompt by a popular booktuber of the day. I think this was published in 2017 so 2016-2017 they were all matched up booktuber to author and the booktuber gave them like a villain-esque prompt and so after each short story you get to see which booktuber gave them which prompt and then that booktuber has a whole essay on whatever they want. 
like some of them specifically wrote about the story they were assigned to or the type of villain that they gave the author a prompt about and others like just wrote about like whatever villainy meant to them. Like, I don't know, I really could have done without all of those essays. There were only two that I felt like really added anything and those were Reagan from Peru's Project and Jesse from Jesse the Reader, obviously. Like, those two essays I felt like, okay, like, that was worth my time. But honestly, like, the other dozen essays from the booktubers, I didn't feel like added anything to the book at all, which, whatever. <laughs> the stories themselves, there was a handful that I genuinely very much enjoyed. There was a handful that I thought were like, okay. And there was a handful that I like very much so disliked. I put the whole list in my Goodreads review if you're interested in like specifically which ones I liked and didn't like and all of that, but it just was a very odd mix. And there was also like weird content edits that somehow like did not get fixed during proofreading or final edits because like just like weird things and I'm not talking about typos. In one paragraph it says the character stood up before she answered him and then the ne the character has a line and then in the next thing it says oh she stood up and touched his hand or something where it's like but she already stood up in the paragraph before that like that kind of obvious shit should be caught by proofreaders before this goes to print and there was multiple instances of those kinds of easy catches so I was not impressed by that but overall I think I'm settling on three stars for this one evening out like the good stories the okay stories the bad stories and like all of the lukewarm essays I think yeah I think three stars is kind of generous so I'm gonna go with that but I also just like I'm in, I'm on such a villain kick right now after Ballad of Songbirds now with this short story collection and now kind of with Watchmen too. Like, I guess I just am learning that I have this like soft spot slash fascination for villains. So we are unpacking that together in this vlog and I'm sure many videos to follow. So that was my thoughts on that. I'm really happy to have finally like checked that off because I've had that for a long time now. In classic Noelle form, I wanted to do two characters. So I had committed to Daphne and Shaggy and Scooby but I only read that one for Daphne because I would planned to read those two arcs as well. But I almost got through all of Shaggy and Scooby, especially because I read most of Black Sun and then had to return it to the library. But here comes the twist at the end of this vlog. Special treat for watching this whole vlog. I have a book haul. From a real bookstore, multiple bookstores. So we're going to do that now. First of which, <laughs> I bought Black Sun so that I could finish it. And I'm actually so glad that I bought this because it has these beautiful full color map end pages. Like, so that's, that's that one. And also like in the back, <laughs> very happy to own this. I think I only have like maybe 80 more pages of this once I figure out like where I left off in the audiobook and how that matches up, you know? It's the first in like a new fantasy trilogy and the magic system in the world and mythology is all inspired by like pre-Columbian Americas and dude, the world building, excellent. The magic, unbeatable. The characters, so interesting. Like you want morally gray characters? I really can't wait to see how it ends because like literally the last thing I remember like the stakes are so high like literally the peak of the book so I'm really excited to actually finish this and now I own it so yay <laughs> I really prefer hardbacks in general but I felt like these were it was buy one get one half off and I listen I am a slut for a bargain so I went for it and the first one is The Power by Naomi Alderman and I have seen this get mixed reviews it did win the women's prize for fiction in 2017 yeah 2017 one of the reading challenges I'm doing this year has a prompt to read a past winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction and I have seen this floating around. So I, I'm not sure if this would be classified more as like speculative or science fiction, but either way, 
I love a good kind of like creepy standalone like this that isn't like thriller or horror because thriller and horror is not really my comfort zone but like dark speculative dark sci-fi for some reason that's different in my mind and I'm here for it <laughs> So that's the power. And so the other paperback that I got is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Haro. And this is the same author who's written The Once and Future Witches, which has been getting like a lot of buzz recently that I think I would also really enjoy. But I think this is maybe earlier in her backlist. I have no idea what this is about other than I've only seen positive reviews for it. So let me, let me just figure out what it's about really quick. This is fun and fresh for me. This is a funky fresh experience. Rarely do I buy something brand new and have no clue. <laughs> Everything that I can glean from like the blurbs and this vague paragraph is giving me like um, Inkheart vibes. You know the story Inkheart where they like, you can go inside the book or things can come out of the book. Like the, the book is very much a big part of the story and stories are a big part of the story. So it feels like that. Maybe it's like witchiness witchiness and ink heart cocktail like i'm here for that if that's what this is i am here for that <laughs> this, this felt like self-care and i don't know why but i'm hoping that i like it because i think if i like this author i will have found a new favorite author is that bold to say i'm excited it also has deckled edges which I'm happy about, so. And then I went to my favorite comic shop. So I found two very fun graphic novels I'm excited about. The first one is Displacement by Kiku Hughes. The premise is that main character Kiku finds herself like back in time with her grandmother in the 1940s American internment camps for like Japanese Americans and she f is like trapped there and has to like live alongside her grandmother in the time of like being in that camp and going through those experiences with her grandmother. I'm looking forward to reading this and the other graphic novel I got this was like listen I just had a good old time buying books <laughs> that I don't know anything about, but for some reason this really grabbed me, okay? I, I don't know. Don't ask me for an explanation. This is Tetris by Box Brown, and this... <laughs> this is gonna sound fake. This is a graphic novel about the invention of Tetris, the game. That's it. That's the, that's the graphic novel. That's it. <laughs> so I don't know what else to say about that one. Dropped about 40 bucks at the comic shop very happily. A little retail therapy never hurt anyone, right? I'm excited. But the problem is, I mean, not a problem, like a made up problem for myself. But the thing is, I have kind of adapted Drinking by My Shelf, Emma at Drinking by My Shelf. She has balancing the books every month where she tries to read a certain number of books from her physical TBR and balance them with the number of books that she like hauls that month. And if it's not an even number, then she has to unhaul books to make up the difference. So I've started kind of tracking something similar in my bullet journal for that. And oh boy, I might be unhauling books this month, which is okay, because there's a few on my mind that I would be happy to unhaul. So we will get there when we get there, but I'm gonna go read now. Okay, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I will see you soon, bye. Hello, it's the readathon's over, I just never wrapped up this vlog, and even though I lost half my footage, somehow it's still over 30 minutes, so mm, I don't know why I'm like this, but like, <laughs> you're welcome, I guess. I was feeling like some type of weird chaotic way while I was editing this that like, first of all, like why, like do you own a hairbrush? Like why can't you brush your hair? Second of all, like why do I plan to do these readathons if it's going to like, stress me out or feel like I'm burning out or like not even stick to my TBRs but honestly in the process of editing this video even though it was a journey I feel like it came full circle like I made a list of all the things I actually read which was World of Wonders, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, Because You Love to Hate Me, Lab Girl, A Sky Beyond the Storm even though you didn't really see either of those and then most of Black Sun and like half of Watchmen that's a lot. That's like so much for two weeks and I feel, oh and then like also a haul at the end so I don't know. I feel good about it overall even though it was definitely for sure probably the most like chaotic 
at all over the place vlog I've done in a long time, but I'm excited to keep doing readathons. I just need to figure out a better, more structured way to feel like I'm not just like spinning my wheels because that's kind of the, what a little bit of this process was like is not rem remembering like what I've already vlogged or talked about or all of that. So I need a better process, but I know that like it's at the end of the day, like it's just about having fun and reading the things. And that's really like, it's not that deep. That's all there is to it, so. So I was gonna tell you to leave me like a hairbrush emoji or something because like I was totally giggling to myself editing this whole video thinking like, oh my God, like you really need to get it together. But I don't think there is one. So instead I'm gonna say, leave me the like painting nails emoji just because like it's a little bit of sass and it's just a good emoji, you know? So thank you so much. <laughs> I will see you next time. See you later.